Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up, an Apple developer tells us what to expect from iOS 9, plus some great gifts for Father's Day. And you know the nuclear apocalypse is coming, so we've got a training manual to help you run your own Fallout show. Mm -hmm. All that and more. More? Yes, on iOS Today. iOS Today is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the best way to create a beautiful website or online store. Start your trial before June 30th to get a free year of custom email and business tools on their professional or business plan. Plus, enter the offer code IOS today and get 10% off Squarespace Build It Beautiful. And by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash IOS today and don't forget to enter the promo code IOS today. Ooh. New open. Hey, how'd you like that new open? That looks good. I doesn't loved it? it, yes. Thank you to Anthony Nielsen, who uh, is in our. Uh, studio and we've kind of nominated him to do all the fun mm -hmm. fancy stuff he got a, a service award from the emmys did you know that yes he uh, has yes. an emmy award and a medal yes. like a big gold medal mm -hmm. so uh because he does some of the work uh, for them too yes. so yep. he's a, he's very talented he so is. thank you Anthony, mm -hmm. for that new open hello megan maroney hello leo laporte so this is the show where we talk about all things ios the watch the phone, the iPad, the Apple TV, if we ever see one, all the things. I'm a little disappointed. Monday, we thought, and we talked about it last week, we'd mm -hmm. see a new Apple TV, Apple TV 2, uh, running iOS, perhaps with an app store, and they didn't even mention it. I know. And you're supposed to be able to run your Internet of Things, your home kit, through the Apple TV when you're away from your home. And Right. Well, we, we, you know, they have already said that you can update your... La if you have the most recent Apple TV, the Apple TV 3, you, they said, I think, that you could update that to work. And they did announce, I think, five, prior to WWDC, five devices, mm -hmm. uh, only one of which is available now. That's the uh, from the Lutron company. It's called the, the, C the C Cesare, Cesare, Cesare. Uh, something like that. Something yeah, like it looks it's kind a light. of... Thing. Yeah, dimming your lights with Siri. Or turning them off and on with Siri. Yes. So actually, uh, Serenity Caldwell demonstrated for this uh, uh, last week on Mac Break mm -hmm. Weekly. She said that, you know, she would say things like, Siri, turn on the pod bay doors and the light would come on. Mm -hmm. Turn off the pod, because you can name it anything. Right. So that's kind of cool. Oh, the pod bay, yeah. That's There's a awesome. lot more to learn, I think, mm -hmm. though, about uh, the HomeKit, and we'll find out more about that. Yes. So uh, I, I wouldn't recommend HomeKit devices for Father's Day yet. Maybe not. Smart things would be all right. Yes. Smart those. Things is good. Mm -hmm. Dad uh, likes that. But we're going to do Father's Day gifts. We do. Oh, it's a good thing I brought some. Me too. You go first this All time. Right. What do you think? I just got, actually, I just got this in the mail from uh, uh, Justine. We oh. love her. Everybody loves I, Justine. That's and her new book just came out. Dad would like this. She, uh, and actually, you know who would really like is people who are aspiring YouTubers. Mm -hmm. She's really shown how you can come from nowhere and have a lot of fun, make videos, and actually make a pretty good living. In fact, I've seen her now on TV and movies, so she's going places. Justine is Eric's uh, analog memoir, she says. I, Justine, is out. And you know what's so funny? It came with something that I do recommend for Father's Day. I think this is a bribe? She sent that with the book? It came oh, with the book. Interesting. It's the Mophie Power Station 4000. And this is one of those uh, external batteries that you can carry around. It doesn't not, it's not like a Mophie case, but it's an external battery. See, it's got her name on it. She likes it so much. Uh, it's an external battery that you uh, can charge not just your iPhone and your iPad with. You could even, it's got enough juice, you could even charge, a, uh, keep a laptop running on it. Ooh. So that's, that's pretty cool. You charge it up before you go, pop that in your uh, briefcase. Uh, the Mophie Power Station 4000. It's about two and a half times more battery life on a regular iPhone. And I don't know how you get the iJustine edition. <laughs> Maybe you have to buy the book, but thank you, Justine. And that is a good Father's Day gift. Yeah, Every is. father should have one of these devices because who has enough battery right. life? I, I think the book is a good recommendation, too. I read a great Absolutely. interview with her. She's she said, great. what's there left to tell if you're you know, always revealing everything on the Internet? And she said, the truth. 
<laughs> we love Justine. Actually, you know, Alex Lindsay kind of discovered her in Pittsburgh, and uh, and we had her very early on in her career on Mac Break Weekly. She does, she's very kind to both me and Alex in the book. Uh, but uh, her story is great. She's inspiring. We love her, and I think she's going to be. We're going to get her uh, out for a, a show when she comes on uh, her book tour. She'll be Excellent. here soon. What do you have? I have the Kinevo M2 Bluetooth speakers. Evil Kinevo. 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 K. K I N I V O. Okay. Kinevo. Uh, I think Dick D. Bartolo mentioned these. He did. Well, I like them. They're they're what you used to call the bookcase speakers. Oh, so they're yes, not like they're a bigger. portable. Oh, look at those. So it that, has that's a the sub? sub. That's the subwoofer, and then the two little speakers that you nice. can use for your desktop, um, or you can just use it on your bookcase and then spread them out. And it it they're very cheap. But they're also very far away. They're way on the other <laughs> side of the studio. What good right. is that? Uh, well, I can control them with my no. iOS device. All the way yes. over there. All the way. Over over there. Was that like so, a remote control? This, it's connected through Bluetooth. Paired. Bluetooth. Paired, yes. Very easy to pair. So, see? Wow. So is that Mumford play. and Sons? No, that is Vance Joy. Oh. <laughs> the, there's some children in the audience, some high schoolers. They're laughing too. at me, aren't they? Already <laughs> I'm being mocked. <laughs> Why do I feel like Regis Philbin right about now? No, that's so, cool. So it's so, their Bluetooth speakers. Yes. You control them by a Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. But can you play like Pandora through there, Spotify through you there? You can play anything. Beats That music? was Spotify that I was just playing. And oh, here now funny. I can play us, Let our alone podcast. classical music, right. opera, kids' music. Mm -hmm. That's you. So there's a lot of question marks that we really won't know until it... Uh, <laughs> This is me being wrong about what Apple was going to uh, announce at WWDC. We have music it recorded. All the... <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, That's nice. How much are those? $60. What? I know. I was going to ask you, how much would you pay I would, for those? I would never have thought it. You know, the when the Jawbone Jam Box first came out, it was over $150. Uh, a Bluetooth speaker. It was one speaker. That's yeah. two right. left and right channel and a subwoofer. Right. $60? It's not portable. Well, that's but, all right. I you don't... know that it's. But... Play, play it again. Let me hear. I can't possibly sound. Do you want to hear music or? Yeah, do you let me hear take us? my. Uh, let me play music. Play something. Play. play. You got any? You got any dubstep? Is that what the kids call <laughs> dubstep? Here. You got any dubstep? Mm. No, it's all right. You don't no. have to play dubstep. <laughs> Let's hear the bass. I want to hear the bass. How's that? Fifty-seven watts. Where's the drop? Fifty-six. This is good. Mm -hmm. You like this? My volume's all the way up. All right. Is it gonna? Is it gonna drop the bass? Get ready. I had Wait to a stop. minute! I was just about to. Okay. I was gonna pop and lock. You were gonna. You were gonna pop and lock. That and sounds great it for sixty dollars. Yes. Yes. Um, all Dad your i it. you can connect your iPod, your iPhone, your iPad, you even your Android devices. Dad you dances to it. You can do dad dances. Mm -hmm. You can connect it to your TV too. It has the it's a, it isn't just Bluetooth. You can connect it with oh, the nice. wires. My only uh, drawback is that the on off switch is on the back, which is a little bit hard to get to. That would be my only negative for this. Dad has an iPad or an iPhone. A case is always good. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody loves cases. I'm gonna recommend these are the cases I really like. They're from a company called Rockform. Actually, uh, Josh, you could pull this up, R-O-K-F-O-R-M.com. Um, these are, I mean, this is a really robust case. You know, the, the best cases have soft rubber and then a hard plastic shell around it uh, to give you extra protection. That's what this is. Uh, but look at the back of it, because it has some interesting little cutouts in the back. And this is what, to me, is the most exciting thing about the rock form. So this is, this is a little insert that goes inside the rock form, and there's a variety of them. This is a super powerful magnet. Now you might say, well, you don't want to put a magnet on your phone. No, it doesn't hurt your phone, doesn't hurt anything. Oh. But it allows you, for instance, to stick the phone on a refrigerator or any metal surface, and it's so powerful, it just boom, it holds it right there. Oh, it also has, a, I, and I like this, because if you're using your phone as a camera, it's nice to have a lanyard. Uh, this is a nice wrist lanyard. Mm -hmm. It's easy to use. That way you can walk around with your phone as you're taking pictures and not worry about it. And then this, I love this little kind of, what, what would you call that? It looks like a little church window. Just so you can see your apple? No. <laughs> it's not just so you can see your apple. It has a function. They also sell little uh, ratchets. At, this can go on. So you could put this on a tripod, very securely locked. It locks right in like that. Um, I love the rock form. They have a huge variety of iPhone cases for all the uh, different iPhones. I've had them since the iPhone 5, 
And I think they're not only very attractive cases, they're strong, they're tough, they're protective, and they're super functional. So I have a, um, for instance, <clears throat> it's probably illegal, <laughs> but I put a magnet, a big, they, it, they give you uh, magnets, you can glue to things. So a little round dot of a magnet that I glued to the rear view mirror of my car. And then when I get in the car, I can put the phone right there and I can uh, meerkat my whole way home. Oh, or hyperlapse or On your rear periscope. view mirror. Yeah. That's not bad, is it? Yes, it is bad. <laughs> I don't cover the whole mirror, just a little corner of it. Anyway, that's the rock form cases. I've loved these and recommended them for years. And I think Dad would love them, too. They're very rugged and there's a variety of things. There's even, there's even a, a beer bottle opener you can attach to oh, that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> I have a case, too. What's yours? This is the Enerplex Surfer. Oh, it's got a solar panel. It's got a solar panel. Have you seen this? No, what does it do? It, uh, it, it increases the battery life on your phone. You can't just use yeah, solar. Yeah, I was going to say, that's yeah. too small to charge no, your phone. it's too small to charge your phone, but it boosts the battery. Right. If you're out in the world and your battery runs out, you can double the life of your battery. Has it really this. made a difference? Yeah, it has. Have you noticed it? I have. So um, you also can charge the, um, let's see. There's the you over can the charge. So it, it plugs with into a US, like, oh, micro you, USB. It has a lightning inside, yes. so you could use a micro USB on the right. outside. Right, and so you can charge this up just, and then use the sun to keep charging Because everybody has these cables, it. right? Yes, exactly. Um, and then you just turn it on, and then it will that show that it's... It's kind of like a Mophie case with a solar yes. panel, and like the Mophie case, micro USB charging. I like that. You know, you heard the rumor that the next iPhone, the 6S, will probably have a Type-C charger. I know. Like I did they put hear on that. the MacBook. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good. Because yeah. I, I can just put a Type C everywhere. Yeah. Now you're going to love this one. This is so cool. I saw this on Facebook and I had to buy it and I just got it. It's called the Spire. Now it, it's one of those things that clips on your belt, uh, just like, uh, a, you know, a, a Fitbit. Mm -hmm. But unlike the Fitbit, it doesn't just measure your footsteps, the Spire also measures your breathing. So the idea now, and I have to say, I haven't used it yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test it. Isn't that pretty? It's like a little rock. It is, yeah. And then, but now the key is you can't just put it anywhere. Mm -mm. You can't hook it to your ear. Mm -mm. You have to put it on your right by your belly because it's going to measure your breathing, right? Right. And it ties and the to your rock iPhone. has to attach to your body. The rock has to be touching the rocks. So you put it clip side yeah. out. Yes, the rock needs to All be right. touching. So okay. how do you know? Yes, that? what we discovered was that I have been testing this for a couple of weeks. You I, have. A... I also saw it on Facebook, and <laughs> those uh, ads really work, don't <laughs> yes. they? Yes. Uh, and I really wanted to love it, and so I've given it several weeks. Yeah. Um, and I don't love it yet. Uh, it's supposed to make, measure your breathing, tell you when you're too, you know, stressed or tense. It or, hasn't worked very well for it you. It hasn't. Um, and the, my first one, I will say, uh, stopped working, and then they sent me another one, oh which dear. was they have great customer service. They sent me another one. They said okay. they were sorry. Uh, and then now my this one continues to work, but I find that it's difficult to remember to put it on. You can also attach it onto your bra. That's what women can do, or men yeah, can Yeah, because you're not going to have a, a, like, I have a belt. Yeah, I've tried it on my pants, and I've yeah. tried it in... My, on my I bra. like the and little it's, cork stand. That's and it's the got charger. A USB charger. Yeah. Um, my problem is I just forget to put it on. It's one of those things where I want. I don't remember. And then it does give me a lot of data about like when I when I'm stressed and when you know. When yeah, the I'm, theory being that if you're short breaths, breathing faster, mm -hmm. that you're stressed, right? Right. Or you're running. Right. So uh, yeah. So it's last week's buyer since um, 2.4 hours of focus and 4.1 hours of calm. I don't know if you can see my screen or not. And 21,365 steps. Nice work. Um, and then yesterday I had 45 minutes of focus, 32 minutes of calm. See, I think that's good. Does it, now, it only works with iPhone. Does it warn you, does it say, because this is what I was, they said this would do that. It would say breathe. Breathe, yeah. Reminds it? you to breathe. So your you iPhone might goes forget. bing, breathe. Uh, it hasn't done that for me yet. Maybe I Maybe haven't forgotten to. to breathe. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they don't have yet an, an Apple Watch uh, app for this, but that would be kind of They cool. do have an Apple Watch app. Oh, they do? Yes, it is so on So the my, yeah. Apple Watch not only will tell you to stand, yeah. now it's going to tell you to breathe. Um, so, yeah, I can find it on oh, my cool. watch, right. too. Um, that, that was the other feature that I really like. But we're not recommending this. You know why? Yet. Because uh, you had kind of a mediocre experience. So, so far. Oh, I'm almost in a focus streak. Oh, well. <laughs> I just, this is now, it's about 129 bucks. Is that right? Yeah, that, that was the other thing that sort of distracted well, me a little bit. I don't know. How much is a Fitbit? Similar. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I talked to somebody at Fitbit. They're about to do a uh, public offering. A Fitbit, by the way, would be a great Father's Day gift. Yes, Dad doesn't it would. have one. Yeah. 
Uh, most of them now are the Fitbit Flex, the, the wristbands. But the guy at Fitbit said, you know, the smartest thing we ever did was make the little Fitbit, which is kind of looks like this shape, because mm -hmm. women put it in their running bras while they're running, and it, it is a natural place for women, and nobody else is doing that. So Fitbit is one of the last people to still make a little belt clip style uh, it's really a pedometer. It does measure your sleep as well. Mm -hmm. Fitbit would be a great choice. I'll tell you what, I will have a review next week okay. before Father's Day, so you have time okay. to go out and get this. It came Father's very Day quickly. Is this Sunday. This Sunday? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I better get Well, you dad. don't have to remember when it is. People just shower you with gifts. No, I have, you a have a father. Dad, you do. Yes, I have a father. True. I didn't. I didn't jump from the the hip bone of a <laughs> really? of a goddess like oh, some people. I thought you were made with a 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> so this, by the way, which is also cool. See, they won me with the technology. If it doesn't work, I don't care because it's cool. That's a wireless charger. Yeah. You can use any Qi right. charger. That's mm -hmm. the Qi standard to charge your little uh, spire, or you put it there at night and you just let it sit there and go. Mm -hmm. I'm charging. <laughs> I really want it to work. I want I'm, to work because I'm, I'm extremely it stressed. <laughs> and I'm hoping this will reduce right. my stress. Okay, I have one more. Um, it's hidden here. What do you have? Uh, what do you do with your Apple Watch at night when you're charging it? I put it in the little Apple doohickey, the magnet. Don't, you just, what do you, you just do? lay it in there? Yeah, like it just it's, lies Like there. it's a piece of, like it's like not it's your most prized of, possession? It isn't anymore. Here's what I do with it. Uh, what is I that? Use, this oh, is the Spigen that, watch stand. That looks cool. Um, I so love it. So the puck it. goes in there? Yes. You uh, you put it all right here. Now, this is going to be great. The Apple Watch, Apple announced at WWDC, the next generation of watch OS. Apple Watch will have a nightstand mode. Oh. And it'll show you kind of like an alarm clock to show you the time and all that. So uh, think, that's pretty cool. So and, I, you I, just, this, and you put this, you can put it sideways, right? Because right. that's how the nightstand mode I works. Think you want to be able to do it sideways too. Yeah, you can do it sideways. Yeah. I think so I put it it's in. It's not going to do anything right now because you know it's why? not plugged in. <laughs> it's not plugged in. <laughs> right, that's the thing. You still have to plug it in. Because it's a magnet. Yeah, it is a magnet, but it just sticks right there or lays right there, and uh, I love it because then you, it's sitting on your nightstand, and then you just press it and you say, you know, what time it is in the middle wow. of the night. You know, there are so many great Father's Day gifts. If <laughs> Dad, if Dad's lucky enough to already have an iPhone or an iPad. Accessories for your iPhone or iPad or Apple Watch are mm -hmm. great, and I love this. How much was this? This was twenty four ninety nine, and I found one on Amazon that was wood, that was ten ninety nine. That's what I got for my dad for Father's Day, oh, which I told my dad that. not to watch. Today. He loves his Apple Watch. He does. He does love his Apple Watch. Oh, that's great. So yeah, so I wanted to be able to show that one, but it hasn't arrived yet, because they're yeah they twenty four ninety nine is a little bit expensive. You can get it for cheaper. Sunday. And it has these little feet that make it not slip. Oh, that's, that's cute. Like, made of aluminum. The there Spigen. you go. That is our, uh, those are our uh, Father's Day, a few Father's Day gadgets and doohickeys mm -hmm. that you could get for yes, your Yes, and we have links and reviews of all of these at twit.tv slash iOS today. Because I haven't reviewed it. Well, we'll yet. have links to it so you can look at, look it, at it. Drink it in. Mm -hmm. It's your last chance to see our old website. Oh, yeah. Yeah, say goodbye to the blue background. <laughs> uh, the new website is probably, I, it, all, all signs point to tomorrow. Tuesday for the That's launch. Exciting! Day. I'm excited. It's, it's so beautiful. Thank you won't have to change anything though. You still go to the same place, yep. with twit, which is twit.tv slash iOS today. iOS today. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a minute, we're going to talk to uh, an Apple developer. Who Oliver Drobnik. Yes, he's here at uh, iOS uh, at WWDC, and so he's going to show us iOS nine that he's bravely installed on all of his devices. His, uh, his uh, company, Coconetics, uh, does uh, apps. So. He's got to do this, yes. right? This is his job. Mm -hmm. For us, it's an adventure. For him, it's a job. <laughs> right. Hey, you know what I love? Donuts. Mmm, donuts. <laughs> and Squarespace. They're almost as, they're maybe even better than donuts. Really? Well, if you need a website, donuts mm -hmm. don't make a very good website. <laughs> Squarespace does. Oh, my goodness, I love Squarespace. It makes it easy to create a beautiful, professional website, blog, online store. We paid for our new website, I don't even want to tell you, more than, uh, more than a quarter million dollars. Mm. You know how much Squarespace is? $8 a month. That's better. And you get the domain name if you register for a year. Eight, but you don't even have to pay anything to try it free for two weeks. You may wonder why I paid so much money. <laughs> I'm beginning to, too. <laughs> look at these great sites, squarespace.com. They look great on any size platform. That was one of the things that we really needed from our new website is we found out more than half of the people who visit our website now come in on a phone or a tablet. Mm -hmm. So your site has to look good on any size screen. Squarespace makes it easy. 
It's very reliable. They're so committed. It's the hosting plus the software, but they're so committed to keep your site up. They will go the extra mile, and they do, and they have the stories I could tell about Squarespace, making sure that they were up all the time for their clients. Uh, E-commerce comes with every site. If you have a charity you want to do, you could do the basic $8 a month site, and you can have e-commerce and donate, take donations and everything, and they handle the back end. I want you to start your trial before June 30th. You'll get a free year, free year of custom email and business tools on their professional or business plan. But you have to use the offer code IOS today. You'll get 10% off and that free year of custom email and business tools on the professional business plan. Offer code IOS today. But you don't even need that if you want to try it out. Just go to squarespace.com and click the Get Started button. Squarespace. Build it beautiful at Squarespace. Com. I just bought a domain name. Oh, yeah? I couldn't believe it was available. Goatswearingclothes.com. How could that be? That's, I, that's not what even I said. possible. I, it's not even possible. I didn't have to get goatswearingclothes.tv or .edu or anything. <laughs> it was goatswearingclothes.com. And do you expect to use this now? I expect to uh, use Squarespace to create a beautiful website <laughs> about goats wearing clothes. Are there, is that? Yeah, have you seen the video, Goats Wearing Pajamas? I, I, I want to get to Oliver because he's been waiting for a long time, but maybe at some point, we'll Josh, we video. can play the Goats in Pajamas. Get the Goats in Pajamas video. Um, so, Oliver ready. Drobnik, thank you so much for joining us. You have come all the way from San Francisco, but I believe you live further away than that full time. Where are you from, Oliver? Well, I'm from Austria, actually. And huh? I, this has been my fourth uh, uh, WWC. It was the 26th overall that they did. And it was great. You had a good time. Yeah, I had a really <clears throat> good good time. Now, are your Coconetics, your company, do you do uh, apps? Yeah, we have a couple of international clients for whom we are basically the iOS development department. So you were interested, I'm sure, in iOS 9. Yeah, very much, very much. Tell us what you saw and what you think about iOS 9. Well, first, first uh, I have to uh, say something about uh, the iOS 9 beta that just came out. Uh, there are tons of... Uh, thousands of developers that uh, are now coming home and uh, relatives and friends are asking them, oh, can you please install it on my device? No! And, no, no. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Do not! <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't want that and you wouldn't yeah. have fun with it. And let, let me tell you why. Um, Apple puts out these betas uh, to allow developers to test their apps uh, and also to report bugs with the operating system to them. And so to just give one example from my recent past, I have an app on the App Store, and this shows a, a system-provided unknown person view controller, and if you try to back out of that, uh, the app crashes. And oh. since this is an, a bug in the operating system, I cannot do anything about it. And so you will see third-party apps crash on iOS 9 until, um, well, Apple fixes these bugs. It's the whole point, really, is they want to find out which apps crash. Uh, the developers want to know that their app isn't working with iOS 9, and then one hopes, in your case anyway, Oliver, that Apple will fix whatever it is that's causing your app to crash. Although I imagine you'll be going home and saying, well, let me understand this a little bit better because maybe there is something I can do uh, about it. But that's the point of these betas. We're not going to see it till this fall. Probably will. In fact, we're going to see iOS 8.4 before we see that. That's coming out at the end of the month. That's the one that's going to add Beats Music. iOS 9 is probably going to come out when the new iPhone comes out, right? Well, and there will be a public beta of iOS 9 also, so the adventurous uh, people can definitely uh, have a look at it before it comes out. Would you still say don't? Well, the, let, me, let me say another thing. The crashes are just a minor thing. Generally speaking, iOS 9 is very stable, but there is another big problem that you have with it. And you had so many nice Father's Day gifts that all uh, were providing extra power to iOS devices. You would definitely need one of those uh, if you put iOS 9 on your iPhone, uh, because um, even though there's this new low, low power mode, um, iOS 9 is incredibly power hungry. At oh least, no! At least the first few seats are, and it's been the same with iOS 8. It took until the, the third uh, developer seat until this sort of normalized. Uh, but if you permit, I tell you a little bit about the new new things that I like about iOS 9. Sure. Yeah. So the, the, uh, speaking of the battery, um, let me show you actually on my my iPhone. There's a low um, power mode, right? There's a there's a a great low power mode yeah. and th that hides in the settings. So you've got a new section battery here and this allows you to enable this low power mode. 
Also, if the bat battery runs down to only be 20%, then you get a dialogue saying, would you like to enable low power mode? This supposedly um, increases your better battery life for another hour. Uh, so uh, you have a better chance to get to a charger. Have you and, used it yet? Well, I tried it out yesterday. I went uh, from San Francisco to Six, Six Flags and uh, turned it on uh, right out, outside of my hotel. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't quite work so well because when I got to Six Flags one hour later, I, I was down to 40% and I had to switch off my phone so that I would find my way Oh, that's back. too bad. Yeah, so in theory, it's there. It's a good idea. It will be great, but not in the first uh, one or two beta versions. Yeah. Right, it is an interesting idea, and it would be a great idea for Six Flags, because you're not going to hopefully be on your phone a ton at Six Flags, but then if you're like you from Austria, you want to be able to get home. You well, want to be able to access your GPS. By so. the way, I'm going to put my Austrian hat on, if you don't mind, Oliver, so that I, you feel at home. All right, now... now okay, now, now, now we're all comfortable. Now we're all comfortable. <laughs> so, but this is typical, isn't it, of a beta, uh, Oliver, that they often when they first come out with the beta, first few versions, battery life's bad, there's lots more bugs. Uh, because developers, the developers at Apple are putting lots of additional code in there to do metrics and testing. And, and so that's not un unusual. It doesn't mean it's going to have bad battery life when it comes out. No, no. I, yeah. I guess it will be really, really great battery life because of all the uh, performance optimizations they, they are doing. And they did quite a few in iOS 8 already. And iOS 9 will be great in that regard also. Do you have... Um the split screen mode on yours? Yeah, let's talk Can about that. That's Before you do, though, would you do me a favor? Uh, 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 turn down your uh, brightness a little bit on your screen, because it's a little bit bright uh, for us. You know, just slide up the control from the bottom and uh, turn it down a little bit. That way, it, you know, our cameras, they're very sensitive. There you go. Maybe a little hotter than that. A little, little brighter than that. Man, kind of uh, like 60%. There you go, right there. Don't, that, perfect, yeah. <laughs> So show us split screen mode. Well, before we got get to split screen mode, uh, I, I would like to highlight something that I find really awesome. Um, uh, the, the whole area that they are dealing with um, and, and making lots of uh, new, uh, new things in is productivity overall. So there are many people who use iPads, say, with an external keyboard, and to uh, make it more easy for them to navigate around uh, there's, of course, the split screen, split screen mode. But another thing that I like very much is that if you uh, have an, uh, uh, some sort of text here and you uh, uh, want to move the cursor, previously you would uh, tap, yeah. and, tap and hold until you s see something. And now you, you have something, I would call it a trackpad mode. So if you touch with two fingers and move it right away, then you see the, the whole keyboard becomes blank and you can actually with just one finger move this cursor and uh, the gray carrot that's then nice. tries to uh, I think that's follow a good that. way to do it. Yeah, uh, the like other that. thing is if you touch it and hold it a while, then you can actually drag out ah, the selection like that. Like that. And there's something something other that's, that's cute. Uh, so if you tap with two fingers on a word, you, tap, uh, you uh, select the entire word. If you tap twice... It's like uh, a sentence? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Well, the whole thing. Well, t two is a sentence, yeah. and and three is the, it's so like and three is the the entire paragraph. So that kind of reminds us of how a trackpad works on a MacBook. Show me real quickly. It's got lowercase and uppercase on the keyboard. Yeah. It? So. Uh -huh. Oh. Lowercase. Thank you, Apple. It's only taken you eight years to finally do that. All right, split screen mode. What is, so, how does that work? The, the thing is, we've always been wondered why the iPad Air was so much overpowered. And now we know why. Um, to support uh, multi-apps, multitasking. Um, unfortunately, this is a crappy old iPad from two years ago, uh, iPad Air 1. Yeah. So the only thing I can demonstrate is slide over, which slide is you, over, you yeah. drag in. Uh, a third of the screen, and you can can have uh, any app you he uh, here. So if you pull this down, you get oh. a selector. I could say I want my calendar in here, yeah, or uh, Safari, where I can show you. This is the book I recently published on <laughs> uh, barcodes, barcodes with, with iOS. iOS. Great. It's available on Manning and on Amazon.com. Um, and uh, split screen mode essentially is the same, but you you have two active apps at the same time. 
And that begs the problem that both of these apps are competing for system resources. Right. So where there were a couple of sessions at WWDC where Apple stressed you should really make sure that your apps use as little resources as possible so that they can coexist peacefully. And the other thing that I find interesting is uh, Apple sort of laid, laid the groundwork for this already in iOS 8 with the introduction of adaptive uh, user interfaces. There, a developer can make their apps adapt to so-called size classes. So uh, it can be horizontally compact or regular and also vertically compact or regular. And uh, this way, uh, most of the apps that already adopted these size classes will work out of the box uh, with these split screen uh, enhancements. I, you know, I have to say, first of all, remember it's going to work with an Apple uh, iPad Air 2 or later. You really want the latest iPad. And I do think this is a strong indicator that this fall, the next generation iPads will have a 12 point nine inch kind of iPad Pro mm -hmm. uh, with with pressure sensitivity, fingerprint, and all that stuff. And I'm, I'm excited about this. Oliver, that's all the time we have. I want to thank you, though. Oliver Drobnik, he's with Coconetics in Austria. And, uh, you know, do you ever wear later hosen? Because I think if, if if I had some, I'd put some on right now. And <laughs> we, could, we could go. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. But I brought you some nut schnapps from Austria. Nut schnapps. All right. Well, if it's not schnapps, what is it? Well, it's not schnapps. It's schnapps from nuts. <laughs> nut schnapps. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have Alan. you ever had nut schnapps? No. I don't think that's how you pronounce it either. I mean, you are pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> that's Oliver Drobnik, Coconetics. And uh, I think it's good to get the developer's perspective on uh, iOS 9. Mm -hmm. But as Oliver said, strong reminder, you may be tempted, oh, I'm going to run out and get the iOS 9 beta on my new iPhone or my iPad. Uh, I would wait. I would wait. Uh, in fact, I would never do beta versions of uh, iOS or any uh, operating system if I can help it, especially if that's your one phone and your one iPad. Right. If you have a little iPad lying around you don't care, then that's then maybe that's different. I mean, I think this will be a little different. It's the first time there's been a public beta. That's unusual, time. yeah. So it might be a little bit easier. But, pu but even public betas, uh, there's no guarantee there's not going to be bugs. No. That's the point of the beta. Right. Do you really want to do you want to go through that? I don't, I don't think so. I don't. So, what's the news? So, there's the news. We we've talked about the iMessage bug the, yeah. that uh, will if someone sends you a particular a very certain characters, like these exact characters, it'll crash your device. Um, and it's also a bug in Skype. They're going to fix it in 8.4, which comes out at the end of this. You month. know, it's kind of funny because uh, Microsoft fixed it in less than 24 hours on Skype. Apple still hasn't fixed it. By the end of the month, they're going to fix it. Yeah. I guess it's not a big problem. Right. So now the other big news is it's like the one bug is gone, the other yeah. has come up. Have you heard of this? It's the no. Trojan horse to fish iCloud passwords. Uh, now, it was um, a lead. This is what I read. And it's it's been at a few sites. I think Mac, Macworld is where I saw oh, it. Oh, that's a good, re a good source. Um, so it's they a vulnerability. Say it's in mail. J yes. Jan Susik, he uh, discovered it. And he reported it in January. To Apple, and they haven't done anything about it, oh. so he went public. So that's the thing, you know, the security researchers find these. The responsible thing to do is tell the company, give them a chance to fix it. Mm -hmm. But there's always this philosophical question well, how long do you wait? Right. If you don't threaten to reveal it, the companies may never fix it. So um, January is pretty recent, but I guess Jan decided, well, they, they, they took a few months. I Maybe I'm going to tell the world. Once you tell the world, it's a problem because. Now we're all vulnerable right. to this bug. And so Apple what says is... there no no customers have been affected by it. Yeah. But what it is, it basically uh, spoofs the credentials window, so that it looks like you're entering in your in any in the iOS mail, but it looks like you're entering your username. So you can send an email to somebody, and they get it on. Is it the iPad and the iPhone? Yeah, it's mail. It's the iOS it's mail. It's the iOS mail. They get it on, the, and what it'll do is pop up. Well, you we've all seen it. The thing that says, oh, well, I, you need to enter your iCloud password. Right. Wait a minute. I've gotten that twice in the last couple of mm. days. Mm. Do you think it's that? I hope not. I entered my iCloud password. So just be careful. Does be it, careful out there. I mean, there. how do you know if it's real or not? Well, I don't know. I think this is, this is he's saying it's possible, but Apple's saying he's heard of no one affected by it. You, but he's just We may just have heard of someone affected by it. <laughs> we might have. I was wondering why uh, they kept asking me for my iCloud password. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, that, th one other piece of news Apple released today that they were going to be sharing 7.1% of the music revenue from Apple Music with the owners of the music, not necessarily with the artists. 
Uh, Does that, that cut into the artist's cut? Well, it didn't reveal what the artists were going to get. It's what the music owners and the people who own the broadcasting rights. They're getting 71.5% yeah. according to Recode. So let me get this straight. Miley Cyrus records a song called Wrecking Ball. Mm -hmm. Apple saying the guy or gal who wrote Wrecking Ball is going to get 7.1%. But mm -hmm. they haven't said how much Miley's going to get. She only gets right royalty rights for the performance. Right. Well, Somebody else wrote the song, they get right royalties. Well, the people who own the rights. Yeah, yeah, whoever. Yeah. That's, per, and that's the people publishing that's, rights. Right. Yeah. And those are the same people that own the rights and the publishing rights? Or publishing rights, rights are... Broadcasting rights? Is that what broadcasting rights. I don't, I don't even know what that okay. is. <laughs> Anybody can broadcast. Yeah, ASCAP BMI, the, the fees that come from the ASCAP BMI folks go to the publisher. Mm -hmm. the, usually the publisher represents the person who wrote the song, but not always. Remember, most Beatles songs were written by Lennon and McCartney, right. but Michael Jackson yeah, so that's the, where it's bought the rights. So he would get paid, and Lennon and McCartney had already sold it. But what they're saying is publishing rights 7.1% to right. the publisher. Yes, and the news is That's that this is, well, this is pretty standard uh, oh. from what I've read. Okay. But there was news last week that they were only going to give 56.3% <laughs> or something. There, there was some news that they were going to give less, yeah. and they've come out and said, no, we're not. We're doing the okay. same thing as everybody else does. One more piece of news that There's I have, more? and then I think you have a piece okay. of news, too. 9 to 5 Max says uh, that iAd will deliver offers to the iOS 9 wallet. That's uh, you know, iOS, iOS 9 wallet. Is you mean I'm going to get coupons, coupons in my and stuff wallet? Coupons directly to your wallet, according to 9 to 5 Mac. So, and this is. Get ready. Uh, you can this, opt out, of course. You can? Yes. Okay. I will opt out. I don't okay. want. I don't want to You don't want ads directly wallet. to your no, wallet. Thank you very much. Did you have a piece the of The other news? story is an email that came out today as we do the show, June 15th, from a company called LastPass. We've recommended LastPass a lot. Uh, it's a password manager. Uh, Steve Gibson vetted it. It's, he says it's the best, it's the safest, it has the best policies. But even the best can get hacked. Apparently LastPass did get hacked. And the database of LastPass passwords, not your passwords to other sites, your password to LastPass was stolen. But LastPass was quick to point out that unlike some other people, <laughs> LastPass not only encrypts your password, but they salt your encrypted password mm, and then they hash it not once, not twice, but 100,000 times. Wow. This is a common technique to make it hard to brute force crack passwords. So LastPass says if you have a strong password and you don't use your LastPass password anywhere else, this is the key master password that opens your LastPass passwords. If you don't use that anywhere else in your strong password, you don't have to change it. Uh, but they recommend changing it. In fact, if you have LastPass, you'll probably get a notice that you should change your master password. They also recommend you turn on second factor authentication. We've said this all along. The best way to secure your stuff, whether it's Gmail, uh, LastPass, I mean, everybody's doing it now. Evernote uh, is doing it. Uh, Microsoft does it with a Microsoft account. Two-factor authentication, it's as simple as turning it on in LastPass, and then LastPass gives you a whole bunch of different ways you can get what is essentially a second password, a six-digit code. I get it sent to my smartphone uh, as a text, but you could also use a authenticator program that you put on your phone. We've recommended Google Authenticator and Authy. Both are very good. That makes it so you don't have to get a text message. You can even have them call you with a text message. They have a lot of ways to do it. But go into your LastPass settings. I strongly encourage you, whenever it's available, to turn on second factor authentication. Do that on LastPass. Change your master password if you're worried. But honestly, the way LastPass has protected those passwords, I feel fairly confident that it's unlikely that anybody in the next, say, 10 years is going to be able to get those passwords out of there. So don't worry about it. I but like it's, it's great that they notified you. This. You know, yeah. that's nice. They didn't try to hide it. And they it. tell you, like, that's the idea behind LastPass, is that you use, you only have to create one super strong password. And then they will create the other ones and save them for yeah. you. So that's the idea. Yeah. Um, I uh, use Touch ID for LastPass on my phone. Isn't that great? So your fingerprint then yeah. validates that LastPass, and that's a great way to authenticate. And I also use LastPass on my watch, which I have the, you know, it's on my wrist. Right, so it's times. also fingerprint I authenticate. I dare you to try to get this off my wrist. <laughs> you will not. <laughs> what do you want to do? Should I take a break? Uh, yes, let's yes. take a break and then we'll and, do our app cap. And then it's time. I've got the hat on already. Yeah, you've got the hat We're on gonna already. We're going to do our app yeah. caps of the week. But first, a word about my mattress. It's a Casper. You know that, don't you? Sure. Casper makes these American-made mattresses that are comfortable. They feel great. And here's the amazing thing. You get them on the Internet. Now, you're going to say to me, 
I can hear it right now, thousands of people all screaming out saying, but Leo, why, how could you buy a mattress without trying it out? Well, we try them out five minutes in a brightly lit mattress store with a shop girl tapping her toes, <laughs> looking at you askance. Can I roll over one more time? Hurry up. That's no way to try out a mattress. Casper lets you try it out for 100 nights. And if you don't like it, any time in the first 100 nights, it's more than three months, you just call them up and they'll take it back. No questions asked, no cost to you. You're going to love it, though. It's a combination of, uh, of memory foam and then latex on the top. So it gives, but it's firm. I like a firm mattress. The problem is my, my hips hurt when I lie on a firm mattress on my side. Mm -hmm. So you want something that gives a little bit. I don't know how they do it. They figured it out. It's the best mattress I've ever slept on. Is that on. you un unloading your mattress? That's me. Uh, uh, now, the Casper mattress comes in that box. That's a yeah, queen that's size. Crazy. And then you, they give you a tool to open it up there, this Tyvek sleeve, and it opens up and it goes whoosh, And it's it's a full-size, queen-size mattress. They even do a king-size. In fact, I got Henry a king-size oh. for college, And it, but the problem is he's on the third floor, comes in that box, it was easy for him. Uh, it's really a great solution. I love You're my Casper love mattress. You have a Casper yes, too? I have a queen also, Isn't and I nice? did not trust that it was a queen when I saw that box, but yeah, it's I great. Know. I love it. Watch this. In slow motion, Casper.com, $500 for a twin, $950 for a king size. That is a great deal for a premium mattress. We can do even better when you use the offer code IOS today at Casper.com slash IOS today. Even Ozzy loves it. Casper, C A S P E R dot com slash IOS today. Even Lisa loves it. Use the offer code IOS today to save 50 bucks on your new Casper. Mattress. We love Casper. I know you're going to love it too. Mm -hmm. All right, app cap oh, time. Oh, you put on prepared. a hat. I wasn't prepared. Quick, get your hat okay, on. Got, got oh, that's attractive. Yes. We look great, don't we? Ooh, wait, 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 like wait, wait. We have a wait breaking. We have a breaking announcement here. We have a break. We have to do this. Oh, oh, thank goats goodness. in pajamas. Breaking ladies news. And gentlemen. <laughs> it's cute. It's totally <laughs> worth it. Totally worth <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, I love how they jump. Don't they? Right. Aren't they cute? And uh, especially when they jump up on you or your car, or both. <laughs> I mean, what's cuter than a goat? A goat in pajamas. Why would you put goats in pajamas? I'm just curious. Right, internet, because <laughs> internet. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. App caps, this is the time where we wear funny hats to uh, celebrate. Yes. Our selections of mm -hmm. some of the best apps released this week. Yes, and I am going to go first. Would you please? I would. Uh, so WWDC was last week, as we've said over and over again. They had their design awards. There's lots of great apps. Uh, one of my favorite I found there uh, was, it's called Shadowmatic. Oh, this and, is so uh, cool. There you go. So have you ever done finger, finger puppets prints. against the wall? You know, you do the barking dog, you do the swan, the butterfly. I'm always impressed by people who can do this. Yes, me too. So I've... Uh, this is kind of like that. What you do is it'll give you an object and you're like, what is that? I have no idea. But you look at the shadow and you need to create something with the shadow. By rotating rotate the object... It, yes. Wait a minute, what are you going to make? What could you know. possibly make What could you that? possibly make? This game is super difficult for me. I might need to turn it over to you. Cause I've you did it. What, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, 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 oh, what, are you, what do you see? I see a spout. Oh. I'm a little, remember the song uh, now, oh. think of the song. I'm a little teapot, oh, short and stout. But now I have to get it. Here is my handle, and here is my spout. Isn't that cool? When I get all steamed up, pour me out. Tip and it's time to me make. over and pour me out. So, it's, I'm not going to keep doing it because I would give away the no, game. No, do another one, do one okay. more, come on. All right. You don't want to do another one because it's hard. It is hard. What the heck? I know. Could that be? So really, this is one of those things where you just keep spinning it around until yes. something gets. One something warning on this. I that was, was the just... first one, so that's the easiest. No, that was the second one. Oh, I think okay. the first one was a bunny. Of course, you got to start with a bunny. But uh, one warning: I was doing this yesterday on the car back from Tahoe. Oh, it's a turkey threw leg. Up. So yeah, don't do this. Don't, in the car. don't do this in the car. You'll get car sick. Oh man, I'm know, getting sick just. This is. What could? Wait a minute. Is it a mouse in a? It's a cat in a. It looks like that's a mouth and feet. If you take too long, it gives you some hints. Oh, and I, I should also hard. say that my 10-year-old boys were way better at this. Were they good I, at this? Yes, they were. That's kind of I think um, it, it, I'm also very bad at parallel parking. Is it so. a fish? <laughs> Is it a goat? Is it a goat in pajamas? I don't know. You might have to talk about yours while I spend some more time with this one. It's not a fish. Oh, it looks like it's turning into... Maybe that it's, would be too... Ridiculous. <laughs> this is such a That's hard... That's a foot. 
I think. Game. CR1 in our chat room's got it. He says, it's a black bear eating licorice <laughs> at midnight. <laughs> Mm. I like this. A little, turn up the music, Josh. There's a little music in the background. There's there. some soothing music. That's because you're getting stressed out. You should put. I am getting a little stressed just out. Put this little spire thing on. And yeah. See, <laughs> see how your breathing I is. Know. Yeah. I'll work on this. What's your app cap? All right. Of course, E3 is going on right now. Yes, the gaming. Fabulous conference. gaming conference, and the game that they demoed for the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC that's coming out very soon. Uh, is Fallout, and the folks that do Fallout... Fallout 4. Fallout 4, yeah, it looks really good, doesn't it? Does. It does, yes. pr The premise of Fallout 4 is that uh, there was an atomic war, a nuclear war. You went in your Fallout shelter, you stayed there for 100 years, you woke up, I don't know how you survived, but you woke up, you went to your family home, you met your family robot, and now you live in a planet where there's nobody left yes. except you and a few stragglers, and you have to wander around. So this is kind of a great little teaser for the game. Mm -hmm. It's free with in-app purchases. It is Fallout Shelter. Oh. The Fallout Shelter that you live in for 100 years, you get to manage it. It's kind of it's kind of like a sim game for a Fallout Shelter. So I am going to uh, build a power generator that will produce power. And let's build that right now. And where should I build it? Well, I'm still in the tutorial, as you see. Look, I've got power. Remember that Sim City Builder game I mm -hmm. played? You still play it. You were I playing it. Just earlier today. Eh, 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 don't don't bust me, man. Look, new dwellers. Look at the stats of a dweller. Tap on a dweller to see their info. You don't want to let just anybody in. This guy, I don't know. He doesn't have nothing going for him. How about this lady here? Oh, she's got some skills. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say, uh, let's bring her into the medical center, right? Let's see what he does. Where where should, where where what? To assign a dweller, tap and hold on the dweller, and then drag him to a room. Try assigning this dweller the power generator room, because that's apparently he had skills of that kind. <laughs> what? Now assign the second generator, second dweller to the generator. So we're going to put them in. So you give them oh. jobs. It's kind of a little simmy. I would have put her in the hospital, but okay. She's going to go in there. She's a scientist. She has to take the uh, elevator down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can see they're they're oh, all that's going much into my little room. Here she comes. <laughs> She looks like Jane Jetson in that outfit. This, this, Fallout himself, itself is much more realistic. Oh yeah, this is just, you know, this is a little fun little game. Now that dwellers are working, the room will start producing resources. Double tap on a room to get a closer look. Tap, tap. Up for a game of cards later. Oh, he's already hitting on her. If you're in a dire need of extra resources, you can use the rush mode. Tap the rush button. You know, I'm guessing that these rush button things are gonna use something that we're gonna have to buy oh. with American dollars. Sure, poker will play for caps. Bottle <laughs> caps, okay, now we know. You collected some caps, now let's build a second room, okay? And I think a diner, oh nice. Tap the diner, we're gonna build it right up there. Did you ever play that the elevator game where you had to do the elevator thing? Here's a little water oh. treatment plant, let's build the water treatment plant right here. I probably should have worked through this tutorial before I uh, showed you the game. Now that you know the basic rules, just to keep expanding your vault, remember to keep your dwellers alive and happy. Let's see what she's good at. Uh, nothing, nothing, but she can be a waitress in the diner. What do you think? So I'm just gonna drag her right here. Ooh, male and female dwellers live in, uh, live in quarters where they can have babies. Assign two dwellers to the right room. There we go. Let's just put them in here. I don't know if it's important. So this looks like a lot of fun. Uh, it's going to consume a lot of time, and it's going to you're going to have to use a lot of money to keep this thing going. So I get some more caps. That's Thank the end you. of the world for you. That's the end of the world. Nobody said it was going to be easy. Takes time. Uses up bottle caps. We're going to put some in the diner. Put her in here. There's a lot of people. This is bad. I mean, I got too many people. Complete objectives to earn caps. Thank you. All right. Now they're all going into the. Place. You can actually zoom in and see. See, that's fun. Look, she's working in the diner. I put too many people in the diner, I think. Well, at least he's eating. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is it? Okay. Send dwellers to explore the wasteland. After he eats his dinner, I'm going to have him explore the wasteland. What do you say? Uh, I think that's a great idea. Explore wasteland. Oh, that, that wasn't it. Where is the wasteland? Up here? That's what I get for not reading the documents. What did you do with that baby? 
There's a baby? Was it? They already had a baby? Was that a kid that you just dragged uh, out of there? Evidently. Anyway, I don't know how to play this game. <laughs> I just got it. Uh, I think it's pretty good, and I'm really excited about Fallout. So I thought, while I'm biding my time, because Fallout doesn't come out for a couple of months, mm. I'm just going to see what's she doing. She's just wandering around. Let's put her somewhere. Where should I put her? Ooh, out the front door, exploring the wastelands. Explore, lady, explore. Make sure you equip your dwellers before sending them out. Oh, forgot to do that. She's just gonna have to go out there without anything. Mm, but that's that's, that's fun. Yeah. There she goes. Bye, lady. So Fallout, oh, of course, so that's is too big to play thing. on an iOS device. You know, you this game. is clever because it gets you excited about it, but it's not in any way a first-person shooter, which mm -hmm. which Fallout will be. Uh, with a wide open universe. It's very much a limited universe with kind of cartoon graphics. It's like it's Muppet Babies to Muppets. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It satisfies the urge without actually having to spend any money. Right. Upgrade your production room, increase my. Right, it's fun. I can, I can tell I'll be doing more of this over the next uh, few months yes. and years. And I'm going to be doing more of the Shadow game because, for the record, I still haven't. That's too hard. It. It's hard. It's hard, this, but it's good. This is for, this is for dunderheads like me, mm -hmm. this game. Anybody mm -hmm. can play this game. They give you hints in the Shadowmatic too. I just didn't that look looked like you had to have yeah. spatial abilities. All right, that is it for this episode of iOS Today. We didn't miss anything, did we? we got Not all the that things. I know of, but if we did, we'll do it next week. Yes, you can uh, email us uh, at twit.tv or iOS Today at twit.tv. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. You can join our subreddit. Yes, Ooh. which is reddit.com/r/iOS Today. There's been lots of uh, great comments there. We have. A good question we're going to answer today, but we're going to answer it next week. So oh, you have to we, come back whoa, about ran out of time, getting we? photos from your camera, your fancy camera, to your iPad. And we have a little device that we're going to show you that. Ah, a little secret. device. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, you can also leave a voicemail. And uh, that number is 757-504-iPad. Thanks to Oliver Drobnik of Coconetics, and thanks for joining us today. And thanks to you for joining us. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Megan Moroni. And we'll see you next time on iOS Today.